back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I've got another book talk video to share with you guys. And today we are talking about The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. I picked this book up because I had heard a lot of people talking about it, heard good things about it on Goodreads and wanted to give it a go. And uh, today we're going to talk about it. First we'll talk about it generally, then we'll get into some spoilers. But do not worry, I will give you a proper heads up before we get into the spoilers. So that if you do not want to hear them, you can click away because I never, ever <laughs> want to ruin any book for anybody. So let's get on into it. This book is about a woman named Hannah and the book starts off with her getting a note from her husband delivered to her via a 12 year old girl who's like, um, your husband gave this to me. He told me to give it to you and um yeah that's all I really know <laughs> and then off she toddles and Hannah reads the note and it just says protect her that of course is very cryptic and obviously makes her really concerned as the day goes on and her husband doesn't return she starts to get really really concerned now knowing her husband the protect her, the her in that sentence is his 16 year old daughter who she is the stepmother of. They've been married for two years and um, her and Bailey, that's the daughter, they've been working towards building some kind of relationship but it's a little tumultuous at times because first of all, she's 16. <laughs> and if you've ever had a 16 year old daughter, you know how that can be sometimes. But um, they do they do their best and Hannah's really patient and loving and really tries to build a good relationship with the girl. Uh, Bailey's mom had died when she was really young and um, it had been just her and her dad for a lot of years before Hannah came into the picture. So you know all of that makes sense as to why it would be a bit of a rocky relationship especially at the beginning. So once Bailey comes home, eventually Hannah learns that Bailey has found in her locker a letter from her father and a duffel bag full of like a lot of money. <laughs> Bailey says she had started counting it and it was at least $600,000 but when she stopped counting it there was still more to count. So a large sum of money and a letter to her um, more detailed than the one he left for Hannah. And from there, they just both kind of really start to be concerned. From there, the book becomes this sort of, I don't even know how to classify it, a bit of a mystery. We're trying to figure out why um, Owen, her husband, has run away, where he is, why he's there, what's going to happen. <laughs> And um, I guess it's a bit of a, domest a domestic drama, maybe more than anything. Because um, it's not really a thriller, but it definitely keeps you turning the pages. It's fast paced. It's um, written in a way that keeps you very invested. But I just, by the time I got about halfway through, I started to find it really repetitive, which I guess is just kind of what happens you know because they're trying to find they're trying to find things out so they keep um you know going to different people and then they're kind of repeating the story and then nobody really knows anything and I just found that it felt a little flat for me as the story goes on and on things get a bit more and more <laughs> um unrealistic I guess you would say which I don't normally mind because you know it's a book sometimes these stories get a little crazy and I don't mind you know um, suspending my disbelief you know to accept whatever crazy things happen but for this it's just it was like they kept it they were trying to keep it realistic but it just went off the rails for me and um, Again, a little repetitive, and I really had high hopes for a huge payoff at the end, and I just didn't really get it. That said, I did like the ending, 
and it actually made me a little emotional but I really felt we were building up to something big and just nothing big ever happened. <laughs> so if you don't want any spoilers, now's the time to click away. But um, if you do, let's, let's keep on going. So what happens is there's police involved and she's not really getting any straight answers from anyone and she has not heard from Owen at all. She eventually, her and Bailey eventually make their way to Austin, Texas where because they live in California so they eventually make their way to Austin Texas where they believe that Owen grew up and at this point they're pretty sure that his name isn't Owen <laughs> because people have told him that and so what really kicks off the whole thing is that his company that he works for um, has become involved in scandal fraud just all kinds of crazy things and so, you know, they're thinking that's why he ran. But as time goes by, it really becomes clear that he wasn't really involved in the scam and the fraud and the scandal. If anything, he was trying to keep everything on the straight and narrow, which then doesn't really explain why he ran if he wasn't guilty and why he would leave, you know, his wife and his daughter behind. So eventually what we end up finding out is through this whole series of events, we find out that his real name is Ethan. He grew up in Texas. The woman, the photograph of the woman who was his ex-wife and Bailey's mother, that is not what she looks like. We end up finding out that his, her mother was someone else entirely different. And that back in the day when Bailey was a baby, Owen slash Ethan worked for Bailey's mom, Kate, for her dad. And her dad ended up going to prison because of, he was involved in really shady, shady business. And because of his shady business practices, Owen slash Ethan's wife, his daughter, um, ends up getting killed because somebody is taking revenge against him if this sounds confusing i'm sorry and so because that happens ethan slash owen decides he's going to get revenge in the only way that he knows how and he's going to turn his father-in-law kate's dad into the police and then his dad does time and he's very upset <laughs> at this point so once Nicholas, who is Bailey's grandfather, Owen slash Ethan's father-in-law, once he goes to prison, Ethan knows he has to run. He needs to take his daughter and run because the people who um, killed his wife are probably going to come for him next. He runs, he changes his name, he changes his daughter's name. They start a whole new life. So now in the present, when everything is happening with this new company that he works for, he feels like he needs to run even though he's innocent because if he gets arrested and questioned, his photo and his likeness is going to be on the news, in the newspapers, on the internet, and the people who he was running for, running from in the first place are going to see him and they're going to know it's him and they're going to, he's afraid he's, they're going to come for him but more importantly, come for his daughter. So he takes it upon himself to run again. And then as the story goes on, we learn that he is not coming back. There is no way for him to come back. But in the meantime, Hannah has gone to Owen's father-in-law and made a deal where she's like, listen, I have nothing to do with this. Your granddaughter has nothing to do with this. I need you to promise that these thugs will not come after us and that we will be safe. Meanwhile, the police are trying to put them in a witness protection program in which they're like, if you do this, eventually your husband can come and join you. But she's like, we're not doing it, <laughs> which I thought was a little weird. She just wants to get Nicholas's word that he won't harm her or Bailey um, in return for being able to see her occasionally. And he agrees to it. And so she's like, well, we're never going to see Owen again. Bailey's like, oh, no. And then that's kind of the end of it. And then um, at the very, very end, it says, I, I like this, the final chapter is called Five Years Later or Eight or Ten, because it doesn't matter. Um, at this point, Bailey and Hannah are living in Los Angeles. 
and um, Hannah runs and has always ran a woodworking like a wood turning business where she makes furniture just beautiful wood furniture and she's at a like um, like a sale like a um, flea market kind of situation and we see that over the past few years her and Bailey's relationship has really solidified they're very close it's a beautiful relationship hearing about that the way it's described really tugged at my heartstrings because that was beautiful and Hannah truly truly loves Bailey and then when she's at the sale she drops some papers and a man bends down to pick them up and he hands them to her and he says something to her. At first she thinks it might be Owen. And then he says something to her that only he would ever say to her. It was like an inside joke of theirs. And then she knows it's Owen, but she doesn't dare make eye contact with him or anything like that. She just takes the papers from him and he walks away and she just feels content in knowing that he's out there and he's okay. And that's the end. <laughs> So I think on Goodreads I gave this a three star. I went back and forth between four and three because I didn't dislike it. I just, I really thought we were going somewhere else. I feel like I read too many thrillers that go so far and I love that. And it's just, it didn't go far enough for me. I thought we were gonna have some big juicy reveals and there just wasn't any. <laughs> um, so not my favorite, but I'm sure it's somebody's favorite. You know, that's the beautiful thing about books, just because it's not mine. Um, doesn't mean it's not yours. So let me know in the comments down below if you've read this and what you thought of it. And uh, I will see you guys again real soon. I think coming up next will be a vlog. Bye, guys.